Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, we're going to be showing you how to work with uh, speed, uh, changing speed of clips, and with uh, speed and with time ramping. First of all, let's just kind of cut, cover speed here. Have a clip here, I'm going to select, and this clip is just a normal clip, kind of uh, shot with a cell phone, shot at around, around 30 frames per second, uh, 4K clip. I'm going to drag this into a timeline. All right, now that we've got this in the timeline here, this is a kind of a longer clip. It's about two minutes long. Let's say we want to shorten this and make it go a lot faster. You have a couple ways of doing that. You can select the clip, you can go up to Effect Controls, and you've got this Time Remapping option here, which I hardly ever touch. I'm not really going to go over this because the functionality of the Time Remapping really is a lot more powerful down in the timeline. You can change it up here, and it adds a keyframe. It makes it kind of confusing. Right now, the keyframing is turned on, which is kind of weird because everything else by default is turned off. So you actually have to turn your uh, you have to turn the speed off and then change it. So so it doesn't keyframe it and then you can change your then you can change your speed up here so to change the speed like i said i'm going to mainly operate down here in the timeline i'm going to right click on my clip and we're going to go to speed duration or the shortcut for that would actually be select a control or command r control r on a pc command r on a mac and it brings up this window now you can simply change the speed here say we want to make this go faster increase the speed maybe by 400 percent here hit ok and it will be one quarter the size now as we play through this Notice it spit up the video and the audio. If we want to go the opposite, control R, I'm going to type in 50%, make it go half the speed. That will be twice as long. Let's take a look at this little portion of it here. Let me, let me mute the audio there. You can see it slowed down the audio as well, but as we play through this, let me show you what it's doing here. Uh, since this is only 30 frames per second, it's basically duplicating frames to make this last longer. So as I arrow through this, as I as I arrow through this frame by frame, I'm going to go for forward here. One, two, three, four. See, every time I hit it, every time I arrow forward, it has duplicate frames. So you could do one, see there it didn't move, and now it moves. There it doesn't move, and now it moves. So basically that's how, it, this is not true slow motion here. This is just duplicating frames to kind of simulate slow motion. So now as we play through, it looks like it's going in slow motion. And you can really notice this. Let's get it weighed. Let's get the speed way down. I'm going to go down to like 10%. Hit OK. And now you'll basically see it start stuttering here. And there it goes. It's down to 10%, but it's just kind of stuttering. And now you're, it's only playing only a few frames per second. And one other thing to note here is that if you have clips surrounding this clip here, if we if we go to our time, if we go to our speed duration changing, I'm going to hit Control R and bring this window up. You have a couple different things here, a couple different things to select here. You could either just do reverse speed. If you just do that and hit OK, it will play this in reverse. So now if we go to the beginning, he's going backwards now. The other options here are maintain audio pitch, ripple edit, and shifting trailing clips. If you change the speed, let's do this to 200%. Hit OK. It's going to change the pitch of the audio as well because it's playing it faster. And it sounds like it's going fast forward there. If we do Control R and maintain the audio pitch, it's going to try to maintain the audio pitch that it has at, a, at, at its original speed. It's just playing it faster. So now it sounds like the same pitch. If you don't want that chipmunk sound or that kind of demonic sound that is created by speeding things up or slowing things down. I'm going to undo that. Get it back to where it was. Hit Control R, and now you also have Ripple Edit Shifting Trailer Clips. If we make this last last time, let's go 80% here, so it's slower. Watch what happens to the trailing clips. Well, first of all, if you don't have this check mark, it doesn't keep the clip edited at its original in and out points. It just it stretches it out, but it just cuts it off at the same at the same place on the timeline here. So if you do Ripple instead, let me undo that. Watch what happens. Let's change this to 80% again and do ripple. And now watch what happens when I hit OK. It shoves everything else down. It lengthened the clip because now it's playing slower, but it also shoves all the clips down on the timeline. Otherwise, it just leaves a clip there and it just stretches it out as long as it can. And then it cuts it off uh, so it actually loses its original out point. Now, the last thing we have here is this time interpolation. Frame sampling basically just duplicates the frames as I showed you. If you pull this down, so let's go over optical flow here first because I have to kind of explain optical flow to understand frame blending. The optical flow option allows you to interpolate missing frames uh, for time remapping. It basically creates new frames in between and it kind of guesses from the, uh, both frames what the, the middle frame would look like that it's actually pulling out. In some instances it will produce a better looking and uh, smoother slow motion uh, from your, regularly shot, your regular shot footage at 30 frames per second. So if we hit optical flow, let's take a look at this and see what it's doing. And this you have to render, by the way. So, so I'm going to hit Enter and Render. And let's take a look at that. 
And this actually did a pretty good job of making that look slow motion there. Let's get a little bit more extreme. Let's go to 30% and see what it does. Render it. All right, finish rendering. Let's play it back. And here it's looking like this was shot legitimately at slow motion. You can see a little bit of kind of a fading off in, around the edges of the, the arm here and some weird kind of pixelization around it, but it actually works works pretty well. If you have something that's moving where the camera's moving really fast and there's a lot of things uh, moving in the camera, the, that will not work as well, and, that, and that's where you would want to use frame blending instead of optical flow. Frame blending will try to blame two frames together, two frames together to get get kind of a similar look, but it's not as uh, it is not destruct as destructive to the video. If we render that, let's take a look at the little results. All right, that's finished. Let's look at that. See how that looks. And this looks a little bit more stuttery. So there's some instances you'll have to just kind of experiment with your slow motion footage. And this is if you're and this is basically what you'll be doing with conventional footage. And what I mean by conventional footage is footage that's shot at a kind of a standard frame rate. Like most phones will shoot around like 30 frames per second. There are new features in new phones that shoot up to 60, 120 frames per second and even more in the in burst modes. But this is just like your standard footage you're shooting at 30 frames per second and you need to play it back at slow motion. In my next episode I will be covering time remapping. That's where you take footage that is shot at a higher frame rate and slowing it down and changing portions of it to kind of move at different speeds. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them.